video. Today we're going to be doing another tying video. Before we get into the tying video today though, I just want to announce the giveaway. And so what we're going to do for the giveaway is I'm going to give away one of my shirts. Whoever wins, you'll be able to just tell me what size you need and we'll get it shipped out to you. And then I'm also going to be giving away a fish pond head gate tippet holder as well as a tacky fly box. It's not gonna have any flies in it, but it'll be brand new. So what we'll do is whoever wins, I'll just order the stuff straight from Amazon or whatever, and the shirt as well. And then we'll just have it shipped straight to you. To enter into this giveaway, all you have to do is leave a comment below letting me know how I can contact you, or just leave your contact information in the comment. And let me know what your favorite fly is and what your favorite species of fish is to fly fish for. The giveaway will start with this video and then a week from now, so next Wednesday, um, is when I will pick the winner and I'll announce that and get in contact with the winner and um, then we'll get that stuff mailed out to you. So we're going to go ahead and get to tying this fly. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and leave a comment below. To start things off, the thread we're going to be using is Vivas ADOT and the color code is E18. It's sort of like a light olive color, so any light olive thread that you have will do. The tail is made from a dark Cock de Leon feather. The body is made from medium Vivis hollow tinsel, and the color code is H02. Next is the ribbing of the fly, which is made from olive Polish quills. The collar is made from rusty brown ice dub. The hook I'm using in this video is an Orient Sun 5241 in size 16, but I like to tie this fly in size 14 and 18 as well. And last but not least, the bead is a 2.8 millimeter slotted tungsten bead in copper. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into tying this fly. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start things off here by putting our hook in the vise here upside down, and then just getting our bead and popping that over the hook point. This just helps make it a little bit easier to get that bead on smaller hooks. And then you can go ahead and flip the hook around and secure it in the tying vise to get ready for tying. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and get your thread ready on your bobbin. Once you have your thread ready on your bobbin, you can go ahead and start the thread here behind the bead and just start working your way backwards. And once you get to about the halfway mark, you can come in with your scissors and snip off that tag. And once you have the tag snipped off, you can go ahead and work your thread back to the bend in the hook. Next, you want to pull off about five to six fibers of your cock de Leon to get those ready for tying in the tail. Now that we have our cock de Leon fibers, we're going to go ahead and secure those to the hook shank here with a pinch wrap, and then just make a few light wraps, and then you can come in and, with your fingers and adjust the length of the cock de Leon fibers to your liking. Once you have them where you want them, go ahead and work your thread up to the bead again making sure the bead is sitting right. And once you have that all situated, you can come in and snip off those excess fibers. Next, you're gonna to wanna to pull off a strand of your hollow tinsel, and then we're gonna go ahead and secure that in here behind the bead, and then just wrap all the way back to where we tied in the tail. And then we're gonna stop here so that we can tie in the ribbing. Next, go ahead and get a Polish quill out of the packaging. And then once you have the Polish quill picked out, you're going to go ahead and snip off the end. You'll see there's a little bit of peacock still stuck to it. Go ahead and snip that off to get ready for tying this in. Now we can go ahead and secure the Polish quill to the hook shank here. And I like to face mine with the darker side pointing downward. And then just wrap all the way up to the bead and just secure everything down pretty tight. Once you have that done, you can go ahead and get your hollow tinsel and then just start wrapping that up, making touching wraps to behind the bead. And once you've made it up behind the bead with the hollow tinsel, you can grab your thread and tie that off with a few securing wraps and then cut off the excess hollow tinsel. Now we're going to wrap our quill up to the bead making open spiral wraps. This segments the fly, giving it a ribbed look while allowing the hollow tinsel below to shine through and adding a bit of flash. Once the quill is up behind the bead, you can take your thread and just secure that with a few wraps, and then you can come in with your scissors and cut off the excess quill. At this point, you could whip finish to get the fly ready for the next part, which is to UV coat the fly, but I find it a lot easier just to let the thread hang here so that I don't have to start the thread again. So if you chose to let the thread hang, go ahead and start evenly coating the fly with your UV resin. 
I prefer to use solar res, but any UV resin will do the job. As you can see, UV coating the fly magnifies the ribbing and just makes it pop a lot better. And once you finish coating the fly with the UV resin, I like to give my flies a nice 30 second shot of UV light just to make sure everything is secure and dry. Now go ahead and grab your dubbing and just grab a small little pinch. You don't want to overdo it with this fly. Then you can go ahead and create yourself a small little dubbing noodle. Once you're finished, go ahead and slide it up to the top and then go ahead and wrap that on the fly just behind the bead. And then as soon as you're done wrapping the dubbing, I go ahead and grab my whip finishing tool and do like a three or four turn whip finish. Pull tight and then come in with your scissors and cut off your thread. As with all my flies, I come in at the end and give the thread wraps a little UV resin and then just secure that with the UV light. After you secure the thread wraps, the fly is complete. Not only is this fly super effective when it comes to fishing, but this is actually one of my favorite looking patterns because of the ribbing and it's just super flashy. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to see more fly tying videos like this in the future. Go ahead and hit the like button. It lets me know that you guys like this video and want to see more of them. And then leave a comment below to let me know if you use any similar patterns or this pattern specifically. And let me know if you guys will tie this one up to give it a shot. And until next time, peace.